first of all thank you all for coming not not for me or for trinity but for uh, giving our best wishes to pastor hemingway uh lisa krueger give a hand a applause for lisa and ladies aid i think i think they did the uh, decorations and the cookies so we appreciate that and what I really wanted to do is pipe in music from uh, Carrie Underwood and Reba and Vince Gill, some of, the, some of those good people, Toby Keith, but uh, too much for me. So instead, we have Andy Wiesenhofer who's gonna <laughs> sing a couple songs for us. A little, a little cowboy music right when we're done. So that's part of the deal. So I'm not one to sit around and uh, mope here and be sad. So we're gonna have some fun. And this is your transition, guys, because you're going from the Midwest to the Southern Plains, and it's different. And I've been telling the pastor that. I don't know if he believes me or not, but anyway. So guess what this weekend is? This is his transition from uh, up north to down south. And what else happened this weekend? Twisters. Anybody seen it yet? All right. All right. $80 million it's made, I read already. And it got good reviews in the Chicago Tribune and Wall Street Journal. So great movie. There's a message there. You're, you're going to Oklahoma this weekend, and that movie is out. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if you're the tornado or if you're the guy on the ground, but uh, whatever it is, that's what's, that's what's happening this weekend. And, and, and by the way, it was all filmed in Oklahoma. And uh, John might remember, but uh, two or three years ago when we were in Okarchi, they had 100 trucks out south of town doing the filming. So you're right in the area. They've done some of that stuff. So anyway, it's a good thing. So I've been sending stuff to Pastor Hemingway ever since Oklahoma came up. It didn't do any good. I don't know whether he shared it with uh, your family at all. Most of it had to do with weather, but there's a couple other things. <laughs> I'll tell them. At a little hometown newspaper, they had an article and they mentioned snakes. They said there's only 46 varieties or species of snakes in Oklahoma. And, and fortunately, only seven of them are poisonous. So you guys watch out where you're walking when you get down there because they're all over the place. And uh, this, this month is the uh, 89th anniversary of parking meters in the United States. And, and the first parking meters were in Oklahoma City. So, you know, there's a lot of notoriety down there. There's one more, I'm not, I'm not sure. Some people here will appreciate it. I don't know if you will or not, but Oklahoma is one of three states now that when you go to the grocery store and get your milk and your cookies, you can buy ammunition. There, there, you have you have ammunition being sold in vending machines and grocery stores now in, in Oklahoma. So just part of what's going on down there. Want, want to keep keep everybody uh, aware. So y'all can't see it. I got a shirt on here that says uh, OU, and that's not Ohio. So we're gonna have a little quiz here with. Uh, with with the kids mostly okay so when you go to walmart or you're walking down an airline aisle and you got something on that says oklahoma what's likely somebody going to say to you no clue oh come on now i know my son knows anybody else know boomer yeah no boomer sooner but you got right, you got the second question right, because when they say boomer to you, you answer sooner. So you get used to that, and it happens quite a bit, especially during uh, football season. So this is not a gang saying symbol, guys. This is not a, so what is this? You bet, horns down against Texas. That's, that's the bitter rival. So, <laughs> there, no, there's, there's, there might be an Aggie person in here. I know we got at least one in the congregation. So what's the name of the game when they play, oh, you plays Texas, what do they call it? Red something, good man, Red River Rivalry. So get used to that. And that's true of any sport, and that's, that's still going on. So Red River Rivalry. I, it's a lot it's a lot to say okay okay so with a little bit oh i know i wanted to ask you one other question 
Oh, you recently won an NCAA national championship. What sport? It's really for Sophie. What sport? Women's softball. I heard a hit out here. Yes. And, and what made it so unusual? Yeah, we got good audience participation. Did you hear what she said? It's a four-peat. Four years in a row they've won it. That's pretty hard to do at that level. So anyway, so uh, this is this is for kids. We got a couple of little books from uh, from Grandma's library about Oklahoma. About half the chapters are worth reading, and the other half aren't. <laughs> I mean, seriously, they're boring. I reread it. Doesn't take long. Talks about cowboys and Indians, the real cowboys and Indians, and the Depression, which was pretty sad. So the big question is, why am I giving you those? Not to get rid of them, no, no. You can throw them away when you're done, but what's the reason? You guys, I heard you went to uh, high school at least, at least one when you were down there. In Oklahoma, you have to have a course of Oklahoma history to graduate from high school. You knew that. Okay, good. Well, now you got to jump because you don't know anything about Oklahoma. And when you're done with that, you'll know a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah. Pastor won't want to know, but maybe he should. I don't know. Who, who knows? All right. We, we got a couple other things here from uh, the congregation. This is, this is for Karen. How did that see? Will Roger speaks. A thousand quotes. So I've heard that when they found out that she's kind of a marketing guru, that they might want her to do that down in Oklahoma. So if you want some quotes or do some for slides or whatever that's relevant, the answer's in there. And it's interesting because uh, you know, Will Rogers might be the uh, most well-known or one of the we most well-known people after Sam Walton, who's back there uh, in Oklahoma. He's a humorist. You like humor, Pastor? And, uh, and music's big in Oklahoma. So, so that's part of the deal. So maybe you can use something there. And here's, here's a fun thing. I found out about this from my daughter-in-law. Pioneer Woman. Anybody heard of it? Ever watched the TV show? Yeah, yeah. I've been there. Can you believe it? I know at least two couples from the congregation that have been to uh, Pahuska. And I've told you, do cook. Yes. I wouldn't give it to him, but... Uh, <laughs> I am told that she's a very good cook. There's very good recipes there. And Karen, if you're by yourself there for a while, grab somebody, grab Sophie. It's an easy day trip to go there. They have wonderful restaurants, some little shops. And if you go to the ranch house where they film the TV show, it's got a wonderful view up on uh, cliffs looking miles around. Uh, nothing but grass. It's beautiful up there. So that's a good trip. And. If you're bored, I'm told, I haven't been there, that Reba's doing the same thing in her hometown of uh, McAllister, Oklahoma. So that's, that's a couple of day trips you can do to get used to being down there. So here's another little thing. This, this is all cultural acclamation for these guys. We don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to give you a couple of issues of Oklahoma today. Unfortunately, I left one in Wisconsin, so I'm either going to give it to you or, or I will mail it to you because it's, it's the good one. But it teaches you about music and arts and history and all kinds of stuff. I'll let you hold on to that. Uh, it's not just the famous country and western. Flaming Lips, yeah. you know them? Yeah. They're, they're a good Okie band. And you got uh, Woody Guthrie. It goes, goes way back. Always a lot of music. The other one's interesting. Oh, here. Look, look at, uh, it's, it's not just rattlesnakes they have in Oklahoma. There's, <laughs> you, you can't see it, but that's a big bug. This is full color photos of, of some of the bugs they have in Oklahoma. And you'll, you'll find them all over the place from scorpions to who knows, who knows what. But they are, <laughs> they are down there. <laughs> are you sorry you're leaving yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I can't answer that, unfortunately. The other book, is, or the other magazine's got a good one you kids would like. Uh, Public Enemy, number one, back in the 30s, if you ever watched The Untouchables, Pretty Boy, 
Floyd, he was one of the guys. He was raised in Oklahoma. He's buried there. And they got a good article on him, which, which I liked. You ought to read that. But they have another interesting one. I think you mentioned in your sermon, uh, reliable. Did you use that word reliable for something or some similar? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, the Bible is pretty reliable. But it wasn't that long ago that Bible scholars said, oh, David's a mythical character. He's not really there. Well, in the last 30 years, they found out you know, archaeological digs, they found stuff. So there is an exhibit that's going on that's got real, real uh, stuff from uh, Jerusalem, all related to David. They have a mock-up of uh, Jerusalem, the way it looked in uh, David's time, which is really pretty cool. They had a picture of it. And guess what? The exhibit is in your new hometown of Edmond, Oklahoma. So it's going to be there for a while. So you have no excuse not to see it. And it, it, sounded, it sounded really really good that it would be a good good thing to do so let's see quiz time again so we talked about the the bitter rivalry right so who's who's the uh, the other rivalry you know he, he likes to talk about uh, you said in bible class the cardinals uh, there are still cardinal fans in oklahoma because of kmox broadcasting through there and it was the farthest west baseball team and believe it or not there are some cub fans in oklahoma i don't know why but the third they're there but it's not the same as talking about cubs cardinals here in central illinois so who are you going to talk about when you want to do that kind of a shtick that's it oklahoma oklahoma state that's the it's not a bitter it's i call it a friend friendly rivalry so guys when those two teams play, what do they call it? <laughs> oh, we're not doing good. Well, you got one. You got the red part, right? That was, that was good. All right. Anybody else know besides Bedlam? It's Bedlam. Sad, though. Rub my eyes on that. Oklahoma and Texas join the SEC now. So that those games won't be played till who knows when, when the schedules get straightened out. Just another fallout from, uh, from bad money. <laughs> Bad, yeah, it is. It's driving all that stuff. So, to think about that, here we've got. I'm not sure if this is the right. Yeah, I think this is the large one. So hold that up so the uh, the folks can see that. Got to got to get in the spirit of things. There we go. That's a large size, but there's there's some more in this box. Here's two red ones. They'll fit anybody. But you got to hold this one up. There. Well, let Karen do that. So you can see so you can see that one. <laughs> Oklahoma State Cowboys. So we got we got two Oklahoma states. And we got two OUs and you guys can fight it out to who's going to be the bad guy and who's going to be the good guy and which is which. Doesn't matter. I will tell you, probably in your congregation, the majority, whether that's 50, 70 percent, will be OU fans, much, much more than Cowboy fans. But anyway, that's probably your best thing to do. Better, better than Cub Cardinals down there. But you never know. You'll have to wait and see. All right. One, one more little uh, giveaway, and then we'll uh, go to Steve. That's, excuse me. It's right back. This one's kind of serious. So Betsy Fleegy's funeral the other day, he sat down at the table and we were talking and the pastor said, uh, boy, it sure be nice to get around a table with all the uh, prior head pastors from Trinity, which now includes you, I guess, officially. Well, that's, that's not possible this side of, uh, of heaven, but I got the next best thing. In 1875, a guy by the name of Friedrich Lochner came to Trinity, only pastor, head pastor. He was also professor at uh, Concordia Seminary. And he came from Trinity in Milwaukee, which is a big, beautiful church with big, beautiful choirs, wonderful singing. The congregation knew how to do the liturgy, blah, 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 blah. And they got to Trinity, and it was a sorry state of affairs. He, he wasn't very happy, and he can't just change things. You know, you, you got to... You got to walk easy. So out of his frustration, the 10 years he spent at Trinity, he wrote a book. And the name of the book is, uh, which I don't know if you know about this or not, but I didn't ask. It's the, called the Chief Divine Service in English. 
So this, this was a very popular book for 50 years, but guess what? It was all in German. Yeah, by 1940, there weren't that many people that could read German, and with another war against Germany, you didn't want to admit it if you could. But just, uh, I think it was about four years ago, Matt Carver has translated this into English. So this book is written because of Trinity, and it's a way to uh, remember us. Now, if you can't get to sleep, it's good reading. If, <laughs> I will tell you, I got through about half of it, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> uh, it's, if you like libraries, it's good for a library. Otherwise, I, I probably wouldn't buy it. But it's, it, it is quite, quite interesting in what it goes on to. Yes, yes, you're welcome. So uh, with that, that's a few little uh, goodies, acclamation goodies about Oklahoma. I'll let Steve uh, talk for a minute. Thanks. Yes, I will try to be brief. And uh, I have a new uh, regret today. I uh, put together stuff in writing on my phone, but it's blowing up. I'm thinking the news that the Hemingways are moving to Oklahoma is like actually hitting the media. And it's just, my phone is just blowing up. But anyway, uh, moving forward, uh, you know, we're all sad to see the Hemingways leave. And we all, but we all know how very well blessed that Holy Trinity in Edmond is about to be. At best, they have truly very little idea how good it's going to be for them. We need to think about these bright things when we're a little bit sad. Um, you know, I think in time, what we need to do is we need to fully appreciate uh, the massive positive change that uh, Springfield has had with, uh, uh, with the Hem Hemingway presence. Uh, we now have a church building downtown that is ADA compliant. Uh, and we have continuity among our three services. Uh, that's something that uh, was much easier for me to say in two seconds here than it actually was to get happening. Uh, there, and there are so many other positive changes, and I'm not going to go through um, uh, a big list. And we've made some more fun foundational positive changes just in the last year or so. Uh, we've got a called Deaconess getting ready to come on board here in uh, about a week. And we also have an operations manager uh, position that's going to continue to help us in many ways that we are not being helped yet currently. I, I'd like to say one uh, small thing, uh, uh, it, but it's not small. Uh, with Pastor Sharp and Vicar Good in place, we are in a good hands and very well positioned to succeed and continue to improve and excel. I, uh, in my heart of hearts, uh, think that without those two men, I don't think the Hemingways moved to Edmond, Oklahoma right now. So we should be very thankful that the Lord has abundantly blessed us with uh, Pastor Sharp and Vicar Good, and we should pray for their continued success and improvement. Um, we are very thankful, Hemingways, all of you, for all that you have done for Trinity and Springfield. Thank you so much. Job well done. Appreciate it. And one, and one last P.S. I have one last P.S. If I get any reports from Edmund that Pastor Hemingway is putting in 100-hour one hour, 100 hour plus work weeks, I will unleash a mountain of Yoko Ono solos, the likes of which the world has not yet experienced. <laughs> and, and then just finally in closing, you knew there had to be a Yoko Ono in there somewhere. Uh, anyway, uh, the congregation would love to present this to you. Uh, uh, I'll read it out so folks can hear it. Well, with thanks to God for steadfast leadership of our congregation in word and sacrament, Pastor Paul Hemingway from 2013 to 2024. And uh, here I am. Send me. He continues to send you. And we are so appreciative, Hemingway family. All right, for most of you who don't know who I am, I'm Josh Woody, I'm the youth director here. And we had these huge plans that we were gonna hijack one of Pastor Hemingway's sermons with the youth group. And I never got around to doing it, but sharp look out, we, we will come for you. Um, so I'm gonna hijack this real quick. Can I have all my youth stand up? You don't have to come up here, I just, all my youth kids stand up. 
your boys could move a little faster, it'd be great. <laughs> we have uh, something from the youth group to give Pastor Hemingway. So we had this made and I had the, the youth that was been here to sign the back of it for him. So he can hang it on the wall and not see all the signatures, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> So we put the years he was here with the youth group symbol on the Trinity flag. <laughs> Everybody went down the side except for Matt. He jumped right in the middle there. So anyway, so I never got to hijack one of his sermons, but this is the best I could do. We'll ask Andy to sing, and then we'll have a few remarks and a prayer from Pastor okay. Sharp. Uh, thank you. I like on the back of this, all the, all the youth signed it, and one of them put a message that says, Decent Sermon, Love Matt. That's my son. <laughs> That's what he, he says to me. I used to do this to my dad um, when I would go through the line, and he hadn't preached a sermon. I would, I would tell him, good, hey, good sermon today. That was awesome. Um, to show you know, that no, nobody was paying attention. <laughs> so... <laughs> Matt always comes through the line and he said, hey, that was a really good effort today. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get it next time. So, okay, I don't want to take a, a bunch of time, um, but I, I, gotta, I, I do got to take a little time. Uh, first of all, on behalf of all of us, this is overwhelming. Uh, I, I just don't even know how to say thank you for for this and i'm looking the, the, the crazy thing is i'm looking at a bunch of people and i can go through stories with you of times we've met and things that you've done for us and um things that you've walked us through and stuff we've been i just what a blessing that is from our god to be able to have done that with you for all this thank you for letting me do that Thank you for letting us be a part of, of the, whole, the whole crew. Um, I, I would like to uh, say a special thank you to the, the leaders that I got to lead with. Um, that that is, uh, is an absolute blessing to, to, to be able to have, have worked. Steve is, is a phenomenal uh, head elder, and I have been blessed to, to, to work with him and John and JR and the board of, of ministry. And I, I'm, I know if I start naming names, I'm going to forget people. Forgive me, okay? I, I have absolutely been blessed to work in ministry with the leaders here, and I am eternally grateful for that because they uh, were like minded in the fact that they just wanted to serve the congregation and that's uh, what what this is all about so i cannot cannot thank you enough for allowing us to do that i cannot thank you enough for uh the time that we have been together i am uh, i've been saying this a lot i'm going to keep saying it that i believe trinity's best days are ahead of it i the the potential here is is so awesome and you guys are so awesome that uh, I believe God is going to continue to do great things here, but, but do even greater things than we could possibly imagine. And, uh, and just be willing to, to allow him to do that. We are, we are sad to leave. This is home. She was three months old when we got here. You know, not Karen, Sophie. <laughs> That would be problematic. Um, Sophie's never known any other, other place. And these guys were three and five when we moved here. What a, this is home. And um, so we are so grateful that you allowed us to, to, to make this home. Um, and again, if you want to be reminded that sometimes God's timing doesn't jive with ours, moving away with a three-month-old baby <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right uh neither does maybe moving at this time of life but god's got this so um i i would say uh if there's anything that you liked about what i was able to do in the ministry here i couldn't have done any of this without these guys could you please thank them for me
Uh, they uh, that is don't don't forget that uh, pastors, families, uh, everybody has a has it has their own unique challenge. Okay, and a pastor's families has challenges too. And so uh, they they I when I had to be elsewhere, they they were you know supportive of of that. So I I appreciate that to no end. Again, I I appreciate the fact that I got to to call myself the head pastor at Trinity in Springfield. What a gift. And what a gift it is to know you guys this side of heaven. And I can't wait till we all get to be together again in the place of total perfection and in the place that uh, has been designed uh, for us to, to be together because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thanks for letting me be here. Thanks for letting us be here. And uh, God bless you. And go Cardinals. Right. How are you? Andy, Andy, where's Andy? Guide me, oh, thy great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I'm weak. But thou art mighty, guide me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now that crystal fountain when so healing water flow. Let that fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer be thou all my strength and shield. Be thou all my strength and shield. And when I cross that verge of Jordan, did my anxious fear subside? Death of death and hell's destruction lead me safe onto Canaan's side. And songs and praises, songs and praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. Now we're going to turn it cowboy. Being you're heading to Oklahoma, you're probably going to hear a little bit more of that cowboy music down there. And it's good stuff, believe me. And uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, are you going to be able to get that thing up there? Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to sing a song, and then I'd like you to sing it with me. And uh, I'll do it the cowboy version, and then add, on the second go around we're going to do the lutheran ver ver version of it okay so i'm counting on you to do that happy trails to you until we meet again happy trails to you keep smiling until then who cares about clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Okay, now here we go with the Lutheran version. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy days to you 
keeps my Who cares about clever to get through? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy dream to you. I'm to be me again. It's a dangerous thing to give a pastor a uh, microphone. I hope you're ready for, you'll be ready for dinner by the time I'm done. Uh, first, I, I have a quote from the uh, famous Tom Hanks film, Captain Phillips. Look at me. I am the pastor now. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, um, uh, Paul, can I call you Paul? <laughs> I've told this story to a number of you, and I'll tell this now. When it was uh, getting ready for the call interviews, my wife and I made a color-coded map of the United States indicating the states that we wanted to go to, the states we were open to go to, and the states we did not want to go to. Green, yellow, and red. Every state around Illinois was green. Little did we know we were painting a target. <laughs> but I had a total of nine interviews with different congregations, and so Trinity was the last, and... I knew that no matter what, I was going to have a job at the end of seminary, so I go in just as casual as I usually am. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to Illinois. And then I met Pastor Hemingway. And he and I hit it off. It was such a great interview. Uh, I knew that this was a guy that not only could I, could I work with, but a guy who I could learn from, a guy I could be friends with. And so really all I want to say is thank you for bringing me to Illinois. I love it here. I love it here in Springfield. God knows what he's doing, even when we don't. And it's our job to be open to his direction, to what he's doing, uh, because I'm a good Texas boy, so what good Texas boy comes to Illinois? Me. But... He knew what he was doing, and he brought me to this place where Pastor Hemingway has been your pastor for 11 and a half years. And you all have been so welcoming. You all have been so wonderful, so loving. And I know that God's got lots of plans for all of us. Just because you're heading to Oklahoma does not mean this is the end of our working relationship. We're all going to continue praying for y'all. You all are going to continue praying for us. And if you happen to double your Sunday attendance one Sunday, well, just know that it's folks from Springfield. <laughs> we all got on the bus. But, no, uh, I just want to thank you for everything. Thank you for all the encouragement and support you've given to me. Uh, I'll try not to be quite so quick when giving the absolution, so you actually can hear that you're being forgiven. <laughs> but you have really, uh, you have mentored me this year uh, in ways I couldn't have expected, but I've only been here a year, but I feel that I am 10 times a better pastor now than I was when I got here almost exactly a year ago, and so most of that's thanks to the Holy Spirit, but it's thanks to him. So, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for the faithful service of Pastor Hemingway and his family to this congregation here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Springfield, Oklahoma. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> Springfield, Illinois. Uh, they've been such a blessing to everyone here, not the least of which me and my family. We know that you have now called him to Edmond, Illinois. I did that on purpose. You've now called them to Edmond, to Holy Trinity where they are going to continue to do your work, to lead your people faithfully, to guide them so that when the devil hears the word Trinity, whether holy is attached to it or Springfield is attached to it, he will shudder. We thank you that you give us faithful servants and faithful leaders and faithful under shepherds who love your people just as you commanded. So we lift them up to you in prayer now, asking that you continue to pour out your blessings upon them and upon us here. Thank you for all your good gifts you give to us, but most especially the gift, the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 